our thanks give you. Everybody say it. No, if you are not talking, as a teacher that I am, it makes me to think you are not listening. But when I talk, you respond. I'm a teaching pastor. I am not a preacher. I am a teacher. Now, I said the topic today is the power of thanksgiving. Everybody say it. Louder. The power of thanksgiving. There are four reasons why we we'll give God thanks. How many reasons? Four reasons. How many reasons? Four reasons why we give God thanks. Number one. Anytime God does something for you, He's waiting for you to acknowledge it. God likes when you say, hey, if not for you, he likes it, he takes pleasure in it. So God is a God that likes us to know what he is doing. He's not anytime God does something for you, he is waiting for you to acknowledge it. He is waiting for acknowledgement. When you don't acknowledge it, he is not happy. You owe him a debt. When God help you to buy a car, you are owing him a debt. And what is the debt? They kill you. That's all for you. You see, this our God doesn't demand so much. He just gave you a bungalow. He just gave you a plot of land. All he needs is just to say thanks God. If not for you, it makes him happy. Number two. The only way to preserve your blessing, to preserve. One thing is to have a blessing. Another thing is to preserve it. One thing is to buy meat. Buy a cow and slaughter it. Another thing is to preserve it. A cow you slaughter that you don't preserve is like somebody who did that because it was so rotten and begin to smell in your house. You will soon pack it and throw it away. So when God do good things for you, when you keep telling him thank you, it's a way of preserving it so that people will get to see it, so that you will be it. So when you give God thanks, not just once, but cultivating the happy of having a thankful heart is a spirit. May that spirit come on you now. Amen. Oh, come on, church, you are not here. I said, may that spirit come on you now. Amen. A spirit of, it's a spirit. Not that see, there are person that no matter what you give them, they find it very difficult to say thank you. Not that they don't like it, but to open their mouth and say thank you is a problem. So many of us, we are ready to die rather than saying thank you or sorry. It's not a good spirit. Our God wants us to be more thankful. Have aqua. When you hear that David is a man after God's heart, David had two principles. How many? Two. He always said praises and he is always there. Thankful. Every psalm that David wrote is thankfulness. Praising him for what he has done. And God keep, that is why God said, David is my friend. God never said David is his friend because David was too righteous. No. He was a man. He was found in immorality at the time before he also repented. And so many killings and others. But because he loved giving God what God cannot give himself. A man that praises himself is no praise. Two of us. If I stand here and tell you who I am, I am a PhD holder, I am this, I am too good. Of course, not God. Even a devil himself. A man that is so bad will always want to say he is good. But when people tell the good of you, even as a man, it makes you happy. That is why in heaven, God has myriads of angels. The children of Israel and the elders we read in the Bible that bow before his throne to worship him. Because our God deserves it. Even we human beings, we need to thank him. We need to appreciate him. So today, we are not even going to say, God, give me this God. All those things you want God to give you, give them. When you begin to thank him today, you begin to see that those things will begin to come to you naturally. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Am I talking to people that are willing to hear? Yes, sir. If you are that one, say, I am the one. I am the one. Amen. Amen. Number three. The only way to perfect your blessing 
is to give him thanks. The only way to affect it, to make what he gives to you, to you see, man will talk about blessing being perfect. Hold on, listen. A perfect blessing is a blessing that has no match. A perfect blessing. Say this man's blessing is perfect. Others may have a car. Others may enjoy health. But their level of enjoyment may not be as perfect as your own. Why? Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it to sorrow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. How to think or to know if the Lord is with you is to check your happiness level. I take it again, baby, did you hear me? One of the things to check the barometer of your happiness I mean, of your work with God is to check the barometer of your happiness. Whenever your life is full of worry, God is not with you. One of the ways to know that God is with you is to live a worry-free life. A life of worry is not a life of God. So, before the worry comes into your life, kill it. Devil knows that the power you have with you is too much. Devil knows that if he command, it won't work. He knows that if he meet his enemies to come after him, his, his demons, to, it will not. So devil will try to put worry. And what does worry do? Worry try to take you out of God. Worry makes you to complain. Worry makes you to use your mouth and talk what to kill you. Because there is a power in our Worry will make you say, I am finished. Worry will make you say, this can't go self. Worry will make you consider God. In fact, what worry does is to make you cause calamity because the power to rule the universe has been given to you. And they will know it. And that is why he wants to manipulate you so that you are the one that is killing yourself, not him, because he can't kill you. So whenever you wake up in the morning, see, I tell people, I can never help you. I me can never. In fact, I will kill the baby before the baby will kill me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will never have a baby in life. I will never in any way. Because Jesus has taken my worries. I am not living a worry life. Rather, I am living a worry free life. Church, am I talking? That does it. A worry free life. I have never suffered from BB before. I have never, and I don't think. If thinking wants to come, I kill the thinking. Because I know I have Jesus. And because I have Jesus, I have everything. Listen to me. Our kingdom is a kingdom of faith. Everything you need in this world, you get it in our kingdom. What do you do? You call it to come to pass and it will obey you. Why? Because the word of God says, you will speak to mountain and mountain if you say uproot and go into the sea and plant yourself. The mountains will obey you. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Please, 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 for me. Number four. The only way to multiply the blessing is to give him thanks. So when we give God thanks, we are multiplying our blessing. And that is why we have created this program. Because we want to multiply our blessings. Today is a day of multiplication of blessings in your life. If you know it is so, shout the big amen. Amen. This means that Nothing is secure without thanksgiving. Luke 17, 17. Luke 17, verse 17. If you are there, say, I am there. Oh, come on. If you are not there, say, wait for me. If you are there, say, I am there. Okay. Jesus answering said, We are there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? He's talking about the ten lepers. Everybody look up. 
Now, there was a time in the world, even when I was small, leprosy was a sickness that had no cure. At the days of Jesus, it was so. Leprosy had no cure. It was like HIV of those days. But now HIV had drugs. We don't hear it again. As HIV was some six, seven years ago, it's how this leprosy we are talking about. Then anybody that has leprosy will be quarantined. They will take the person into one big forest and they begin to live there. Listen carefully. When they are coming out, that's the committee of leprosy people. Now, if maybe reverse step is their camp, it means that anybody having leprosy in eastern region of Nigeria will always come to river state, go to their camp inside, maybe near the river, where nobody can ever go to. They will pack them there. If they are coming out to look for food, they will come with a bear. And they are coming, they are ringing. Bam! Bam! Unclean people are coming. Bam! Kilia! Unclean people are coming. So if you see them coming, you will run. That was how devils subjected them to. They were living in that kind of pitiable life. A life of rejection. And as they were coming, they jumped Jesus on the way. Others see them on the road away, but Jesus met them and the leprosy power. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because behind every sickness, there is a demon. It's not just leprosy, virus, or whatever. If there is a demon behind the virus. So the demon that was in charge, power. And Jesus told them, return, go straight now to the high priest. Just show yourself to the high priest. Because at that time, it is the high priest that will ascertain. By then, Holy Spirit wasn't dwelling in human beings. Rather, the Holy Spirit is in the temple. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is one of the things you read in this book. By then, the Holy Spirit wasn't in human beings. The Holy Spirit was in the temple. So, the high priest, we are the custodians. Those that will enter the Holy of the Holies and console the Spirit. So, the high priest, even if the, in fact, the leprosy can't even attack them. Because they, are, they have the power. Praise the Lord. So, if you want the Spirit, you come to them. They will consult for you. So, they will be a custodian. That is why Jesus said, go and meet them. Now, they will certify you. They will look at you and give you a paper that you will give to anybody that has them to show the person that you have been certified. Otherwise, you remain there. Now, listen to this. When they were going, as they left Jesus, they were still leprosy people. Ten of them. As they were going, Jesus only said, go and show yourself. If they hadn't come, the leprosy would have remained. To so every provision of God, there is always a condition. If those people did not, if Jesus said go and they did not go, they will remain in their state of life. Most of us, what is keeping us like this is because we are not adhering to the instructions of God as enshrined in the Holy Scriptures. We are highly disobedient believers. It doesn't work that way. Most of us here are unbelieving believers. We have believed, but we are unbelievers in our heart. Then the miracle would not happen. In the Sunday school, I told you something. I said, if you pray a prayer commanding any mountain that the mountain refuses to move, it is you that have the problem, not God. Because He has given us all things. It's like a child, your son, about 11 years. You left the home for the child. Food is there, garlic is there, yam is there, beans is there, fish, tea. And the child, mommy, I am hungry. He said, but there's no there. Come and feed me. Isn't that boy sticking his head? Most of us are spiritual nephews. We are spiritual babies. We are still sucking breast when we should be chewing bones. And as long as you remain a child in the spirit level, you will never get what belongs to you as a son. It's in the book too. 
Amen. 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 You must rise up and take what belongs to you. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Come on, you are not talking. Say neighbor. neighbor. It is time, it is time. to rise up as giants rise up. and take what rightfully belongs to us. <laughs> if you believe in that, shout the highest amen. Yeah. Yeah. And they started going. Jesus just said, oh, go. And come on, come on. It, it, it can be philosophically, it doesn't make sense. It was the high priest that told them to be quarantined. It is also the high priest now that he said, well, for what? Master, what are you talking? Why not lay hand on me? Isn't that man arrogant? He just met me on the way. He says, I thought he would. Neman did it. When Neman met Elisha, Elisha said, Go to the river. Deep yourself that he said, Come on. Are there no river in, in Syria? Why will he? No, in the Bible, there are higher river. Because by the, the, Come on. It's just like a prophet in Nigeria. Ten and a small, or whoever. Those people say, Come on. Go, go, go. Go to Calabar River. Come on. Don't we have good river that is well treated? You know? It's not like that, Ogao. The servant said, Ogao, you have mis- you have misunderstanding the prophet. Oh. Why not you humble yourself? Adam said from Israel, said, Adam man said it, it will happen. Just go. And when the man obeyed, the lepers left. And Jesus also said, Go! And show yourself to the high priest. And the people obey. Obedience is the master key to your sources. I get what I'm saying? Yes. Every lover of God should be obedient. What will make you to know whether you love God or not is your obedience to His word. All things work it together for what? Good to His lovers. And we know we love him because we obey his uh, commandment. And his commandments are not grievous. They are not difficult for us to obey. When God gives you a thing to do, it's for your good. It's for your what? Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. I think if you're hearing these things and you're getting them, you have to let me know you're getting Church, are you getting these things? Yes, sir. If you are getting it, say, I am getting it. I am getting it. Amen. Amen. And they started going. Behold, as the high priest came to see them, they were all men. According to the world, according to the world, the Bible is the word of God in print. This is that word that Jesus spoke. This is the word. And Jesus spoke a word. And the word came. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he would speak a word in Jerusalem and it will happen in Capernaum. Now he spoke and it happened somewhere. And you know what? Thing? One of the bad things that happened there is that immediately they all we are made home. Every man flee to their cities. Some of them are from Sokoto, some from Kam, some Lagos, some Jalingo. It was one of them, maybe the one from Medukri. That one said, Ah, uh-uh, but I am made home though. But it is somebody that made me home. That man, I didn't know him. But if this man hadn't said a word, nothing would have happened. There is a need to go back to this man. Out of how many? Ten. One over ten is never a good man. Praise the Lord. Uh, you are writing an exam and you score one over ten. In fact, you didn't write. Maybe the. <laughs> and most of you are having one over ten in your school days. May the Lord take away the spirit of one over ten from you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when parents have one over those parents that normally have one over ten, and they have grown and they will tell their children that they have been taking first. Because, because no parents will tell the child I used to take last. In my own time, come on, do it. In my own time, I was taking check the notes. And they will never bring their notes and show their children. May the spirit of one over ten get up for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The people scored one over ten. And it was a bad man. And Jesus said, It's a master. I want to take. But then Jesus had forgotten about that one. He was a busy man. He said, Jesus, I want to take him. He said, Okay, I remember. But you people, we are ten. We are at the red. He said, Master, as you see us, we are ringing that bell. We didn't even know ourselves so. 
if someone in that camp we are meeting. <laughs> I don't even, you see those, as you see out there, we didn't know ourselves at all. We are not even from the same place. Just that as you heal us, everybody. And me, it has been my nature. It's a spirit. Thankfulness is a spirit. How do you develop that spirit? You start thanking God from the little. You will not have enough before you begin to thank. Because if you don't thank God for the little, even when you have more, you, because it's a spirit. That spirit can be beat up. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. And that's the spirit I want you to beat up for today in Jesus' name. Amen. That your element is too small, I say in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Jesus said, you people will attend. And it's only you. After the man finished explaining, Jesus said, go. For your faith had made thee go. Let me explain what that grammar means. You know, when you kill somebody of leprosy, if the person's finger was already cut, what will happen is that the leprosy will go, but the cut finger will remain here. Amen. Amen. If the hand was squeezed, the hand will still remain squeezed, but just that the virus is there. There will be no further cutting of the fingers. But when Jesus said, your faith has made you, the man grew back the fingers. That is what the meaning of the word made you. You are restored. It is restoration. So the young man became restored by thankfulness. The Lord will restore you today. Amen. I get what I'm saying. So the man wasn't a fool for coming to Jesus. The man came to Jesus to thank him for restoration. And the man was restored. And his body became like a newborn baby body. If you see the sufferings, if you see the chocolate color, and people, when the wife saw the man, he said, honey, is this you? That shall be what people will say about you from now on. Another <laughs> you know, man that was healed of he said, Is the man, the man that was born. Another one said, It's not the man. And the man said, I am that man. Timaya said, I am still that planted boy. That boy, you know, then, that one that used to carry planted and said, I am still that boy. That shall be your story in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when God begins to bless you, there are some persons in life that have said you will die. There are some persons that say you will never make it. There are persons in here that they have written your own off. In life, there are some persons seated here that whenever they are doing any meeting in the house, they will never call you. They will do it. He said, okay, also inform him, oh, you, you know, he's true, he's even a member of our family. Let's just inform him now. Eh, uh, Agnes, there is a meeting with you, though. We know if we call you, you won't come. But did you call? We just know. We don't talk about that calling because we know you won't come. From today, if they don't see you, no meeting will go. Amen. And any meeting they will do outside you, they will redo it. Amen. You don't understand what I'm saying. There are persons. There are persons that matter in the family. There are persons that if you do meeting, if they come, they will do it. Amen. Amen. Because as they come, they say, how much do you people even bring? He said, we just contributed to what we have is one million. He said, take your one million. I'm giving you people five million. If you have such a person in your family, every meeting you call him, so that you don't waste your time with the one you will do. Because as you come, you cancel all. That is who the Lord is making you to be from now to 2024 and beyond. Hey, hey. Malachi 2, verse 2 to 3. Malachi 2, verse 2 to 3. Malachi 2, verse 2 to 3. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it in your heart to give glory unto my name, God is not saying, said the Lord of hosts. I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessing. He's telling the people. Because the people have come to commonize God. He's talking about the Israelites. He said, if you will not give glory to me, I will curse your blessings. So we are giving glory to God because we don't want God to curse our blessings. That's why we give glory to God. 
and I will cost them. Yeah, he said, you can say, yeah, I have cost them already. Because you do not lay it in your heart. Three, behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread darkness upon your face. Even the doggone of your solemn feast. And the one shall take you away with it. You see that? God is said, because you don't give glory to me. See, it is either you are giving glory to God or you are giving glory to Satan. You can never be, be neutral. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. There is nothing like neutrality in the kingdom. It is either you are serving God or you are serving Satan. You cannot be neutral. There is no neutrality in the spirit realm. You must belong somewhere. When you are not giving God the glory, you are not giving Satan the glory because you must give glory. That you are not giving God the glory, you are giving it to Satan. And that is it. And when you are serving Satan, remember that our God is a jealous God. Church, are we talking? Yes, sir. Thanksgiving is the mystery behind multiplication of blessing. Thanksgiving is the mystery, is the hidden thing behind the multiplication of blessing. John 6 verse 11. John 6 verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he has given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that we are sat down, and likewise of the fish, as much as the wool. You see, the miracle didn't come to Jesus' hand. It never happened. What Jesus did that multiplied the fish and the bread water, Jesus lifted it up and gave thanks. There was no food to feed the crowd. Listen to me. There was no food to feed the crowd. Rather than Jesus getting worried. Rather than Jesus said, my father, is it how you do? How will you bring crowd now? Most of us like complaining. There is no future for a complainer. We are not having a kingdom that accommodates complaints. Rather, we are operating a kingdom that everything is possible. Look at that. No food for the crowd. Yet, Jesus said, He said, Philip, what do we do? Peter, what do we do? There is somebody here with two fishes and five dollars. He said, Bring it. And Jesus brought it in that borrowed condition. If it is some of you now that went to your neighbor and borrowed fish and borrowed bread, you say, Hey, this is my work. But Jesus never complained. What Jesus did was to break it and give thanks. Whether there is food in the house or not, you must have to give thanks. Whether there is sickness, there is diseases, there is play, no money, cashless policy, tinibu this, blari this, sin this, wicked this, blah, 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 blah. my word, my this, you must always give thanks. Thanksgiving changes things. Thanksgiving positions your life. Amen. Amen. And Jesus gave thanks. And what followed was that the food was multiplied. After which they had extra 12 baskets. Why? Because Jesus gave thanks. Thanksgiving brings about multiplication. I don't know who is here that have not eaten. I don't know who is here that is that you are not eating. That I'm talking about. Not that this morning is Sunday. You want to come to church before you eat. I mean, no food in the house. You don't even have plan of the one you will eat after that. My God is supplying your needs right now. Amen. Come on, that your enemy see. My God is supplying your needs by the enemy you are shouting now. Amen. Amen. You know what he, he said? He will supply it according to his riches. And glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to what you work. They have all me in my place of work. They are only me for more. God is not supplying your need according to your work. God is supplying your need according to his uh, riches. According to heavenly economy. Not according to Naira value. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. It is the only way to perfect your blessing. It is the only way to perfect your blessing. Look at that. In the book of Mark 8, 23 to 25. Mark 
23 said, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had split on his eye and put it on, on the hand upon him, he asked him if he saw. And he looked up and said, I see man as a tree walking. After that, he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored. And he saw very clearly. What is this place? He said, Jesus, as a result of thanksgiving, will take your life from level to level until you get to the place he wants you to be. He wants you to be. So what are we talking? We are saying we must cultivate the habit of a thankful heart. Cultivate the habit of a thankful heart. Now, before we wrap up, why must we give glory to God? Why? Is it expedient that we must give glory to God? Why? Except the Lord build a house. In vain they that labor, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watch the city. So it is the hand of God that is doing it. No ministry can grow outside God. Any church that is booming outside God will soon collapse. How many church do you know? Hey, where are they? Any church that never started with the foundation of God must always collapse. It's a matter of time. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. Except the Lord build a house in vain. So, any area you are growing, you are developing, you any good thing happening to you, it is the hand of God. Especially when you are born again. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Because they were praising God. The early church, they were praising God, having favor, and the church was being uh, multiplied. Praising the Lord. A church that is default of thanking God can never grow. We must have a thankful heart. Even if your church is two persons, thank God for that two persons and believe for multitude. If your church is multitude, thank God for the multitude and also believe for extra multitudes. Praising the Lord. Hallelujah. After all, no man will stop growing until you feel you have grown. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. No, no level of wealth. Uh, we heard that we get this. Is, is Biket the richest now again? No. Somebody have taken over. Is it not true? Hello. Uh, you are coming. Amen. I said you are coming to take over the world. Amen. I said people will hear your name. Amen. The generation will talk about you. Amen. And the church will say, Amen. And that is it. May the Lord continue to bless you. May He continue to guide us. Amen. Even as we begin to cultivate a thankful heart. The last, He said, God is the one at work in your life. That is why we must give thanks. Because if not for God, I told you how my life, when I started here, I told you how my life was shattered and battered. It was just this God. If I did not embrace this God, I wonder how my life would have been. But thank God for Jesus, who opened up my eyes. How did my life change? I begin to forget the covenants of God, and I begin to apply them. There is one pastor, one man that changed my thinking. I was a pastor, but I wasn't seeing any hand of God until one day, how to be led by the Spirit of God. I don't know why I'm always talking about this. Now, God led me. I had two, no, sorry, three weeks fasting and prayer here. After those three weeks, I didn't say try, six to six, three weeks. Because I said, God, this must change. I cried, I prayed. After that prayer, five days later, I was led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God said, go to the internet. By then, I didn't have food. It was so, so deadly. The little one I had, somebody stole it. So I didn't have food. <laughs> Within that period. So, I didn't have food to pray. But he said, go to the internet. I went to the internet and sat down. He said, buy time. I bought time. He said, log in. I log in. He said, time to 
churches in America and it was Brother Copeland that came out. I gave prayer requests. He said, give prayer requests. I gave. It was the reply of that prayer request that changed me and changed this ministry. By then, when we gather, that by fire, that by fire, hey, mommy, what that, that by fire. It was the man that told made me to understand that mommy water is not a factor. <laughs> it was the man that made me to understand all the people they are not factor. That the power we have is already all we get to do is to keep them where they belong. I begin to study with him. I begin to have online Bible studies, and I begin to grow. I begin to grow. Every time I was sleeping with the man, when I woke up, it was like I have found a tooth I have never found before. All the way from America. Until tomorrow. When I walk in, continue to study with the man, the man linked me to Oyelibo and said, hey, when I met Oyelibo, walk finish. Praise it all. Hallelujah. That is why you are seeing me, I am with the That is how the Lord will make you to be with the in the name of Jesus, Amen. let me tell you something. Satan is not a factor. Yes. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Devil is at our feet. Amen. Devil is nothing and is equal to us. Witches and wizards are nothing. We are seated together with Jesus in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and what? Powers. Where we are, Satan can't go. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And this morning we are coming to give them where they belong. Where do they belong? Our feet. We are going to dance thunderous dance. We are going to smile thunderous smiling. Yes. And we are going to subdue them. Amen. Devil is already in shape. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands towards them. Lift them. 